it's okay, they can be wrong. And this is We Were Gamers episode 398, in which we are not wrong, because that's how we roll on this podcast. And I'm JJ, and we got Andy over there. Hey. I'm me in my sick voice. All right all the time. It's nice to be right all the time. That's correct. Uh... (laughs) I hate to do this to people <laughs> again, but we got to talk about baseball again. Oh, no. Why do you hate to do it to people? I, it's look, the NFL gets all the praise. The F1 gets all the girls. Baseball's where the real stats are at. They do the most of it. So I guess it makes sense that there's more stats, right? There's the most baseball occurring. Yeah. So if like, really, honestly, we should be talking about baseball more than we are, probably. In some degree. Uh, I mean, we could talk about Angel Hernandez every week on this podcast. <laughs> bro, every time I see the ump report card from him, it's just like two feet outside of the batter's box on the away side. It's just like, is this how it is? <laughs> yeah. I think one of one of them last week was like a solid nine and a half inches outside the box. Might have been six and a half. I can't remember. And be generous. It's nine. <laughs> I, uh, I, 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 uh, there's no way you guys would know unless you were watching this one specific, uh, Dodgers Padres game, but there was some suspect umpiring, you know, where it's like, okay, like he called, you know, he's, oh, he clearly missed that one. And the next one got a makeup call. You know, that happens a little bit, right? Not, not outrageous. And then like. Uh, the Dodgers pitcher had been throwing to that point. It's, it's the fifth inning, which is an important distinction. There was a perfect okay. game going in the fifth inning uh, against the Padres. And the player comes up and shows a bunt. And people on the internet are mad at this. And I, I fail to... Un- and then the very next... Pit, he, he pulls it back in because it was a ball and, you know, whatever. Uh, doesn't go for it. And then the next pitch is at the guy's head. Uh-oh. Ooh. The bench is clear. You know, nothing. No one actually fights or does anything. You know, it's a lot of, like, standing around. And the pitchers, like, lackadaisically walk in from the outfield. They're like, nothing is going to happen, I guess. And, you know, they all chalk it up to a misunderstanding or whatever later. But, like, you see, it's easy to see how people are saying that that's, like, retaliation, Right. Sure, yeah. yeah. I could see that. Yeah. But he didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, if he had broken the perfect game with the bunt, I guess you could complain about that. He didn't do it, though. Is it illegal to show bunting? It's the fifth inning. Are you just supposed to give up? Like, what is the... <laughs> I don't understand what the deal is. I don't know, but... People get so every, weird about this stuff, Every you know? batter in the world wants to ruin a perfect game. Of course they do, right? Yeah. The team was losing. It wasn't by a ton. They went on to win that game. Like, you know, like, what are people mad about? I'm so confused. Anyway, it, sorry, I, I had to vent about the one thing that affected me and the team. Uh, that I, I saw most. the Cubs lose a, a game. They were up 8-0 this year already. Nice. That, I, I love to hear stories about big market teams losing to little market teams. Quote unquote little. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but we're here to talk about another big market team, Shohei Otani, who is a bigger, is a big market team by himself, I guess. Yeah, I was going to say he is the market. <laughs> he's, he's probably the cap of multiple teams put together. Oh, for sure. The, in terms of the value of that contract, like I bet the entire bottom half of the league has a payroll about equivalent to that contract, right? Yeah. Well, what's the you guys, gambling addiction A's? is real and serious problem. Okay. You think so? No, no jokes. Bro, I, I, Andy, I, I assume you saw the stats from this guy. The, the total active payroll of the Oakland Athletics while they go to play in a AAA stadium. $62 million. It's that high? <laughs> <laughs> Only four times the amount that uh, Ipe lost. <laughs> Only. Well, that could've, was just the whole. That wasn't the total value of the bets, right? Could have won it back in just one bet. Just keep doubling down, right? Whose strategy is that? 
That's why uh, betting limits exist. Really, really rich people, I think. Yeah, I, I just... It, every detail that comes out about this thing is just less and less believable. Not that, like... Look, I believe it. <laughs> but it's just like, how does anyone let them get away with this? Yeah, I don't understand how... I mean... I think now we understand that Shohei, I mean, he like went to the police with his phone and someone finally got involved to protect the guy. Right. I mean, it, I assume from it was all the Dodgers. accounts, uh, you would hope at least. Would, uh, yeah. <laughs> from all accounts, it seems like Shohei didn't actually do anything wrong himself or there hasn't been any allegedness of him doing anything wrong, even from the guy who is going to jail, basically. <laughs> Yeah, there's also, I mean, they brought in specialty investigators that are like native Japanese speakers to like go through every single possible avenue of communication the guy has. So, so, so I mean, see, at this Andy, point, they can't they, they can't police... get specialty translators when they feel like it, right? <laughs> sure, sure feels like it. Sure feels like maybe anybody involved with his finances along the way could have hired these people in order to, you know speak directly to Shohei instead of letting Ipe control his entire financial situation. Yeah. So wild. Crazy. Man. Crazy. Everybody involved should lose their license. Yeah. It, it, if you were the person who was managing his money or like investment accounts or whatever, of which he must have several because he's a very wealthy man. Like, they're not just like, the money constantly comes from this one account every so often. It's very strange that it's actually all done by this one other guy. Like, mm -hmm. he's never doing it himself. Yeah, someone's got to ask a question somewhere along the way. You'd think, but they didn't for years. Yeah. The, the, the shocking part to me was how long it had been going on, right? 2019. Yeah. Right? No, 2021. Yeah. 21 is he, he he met the bookie i guess the first time in 2019 but then started getting serious about the betting later or something like that yeah yeah that's crazy you guys <laughs> if if anybody doesn't know the details that came out through the police filing you should go read them i mean we can't recap literally everything that came out but it was i mean they literally laid out an entire case in the filing no evidence withheld and it's it's just damning, and you know it, the bets ranging from ten dollars to tens of thousands. Insane, it's just, you know, and multiple thousands of dollars of bets a day. Like the dude has issues. Yeah, the number, the just the sheer number of bets that he placed. Yeah, God, I don't think I could even think about that much sports a day in order to place that many bets, even just offhandedly picking things. Which seems like what I'd, he did, because he lost a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I would love to know the explanation for why there was that whole, oh, no, I gave him the money uh, segment of this drama. Yeah. But, you know, could be misunderstanding or whatever, or, you know, Mizuhara was trying to protect himself or... I yeah, don't know. I, yeah. I just, I'm, yeah. The whole thing is crazy. And then I can't, <laughs> I can't believe that the Angels uh, didn't know any of this. Will be interesting to see if they get dragged into it. Yeah, I guess the question was, you know, now is that like, you know, stuff coming out about him not actually being a real interpreter, basically. <laughs> no. Well, like the, his. Degrees are kind of like semi fraudulent or something, right? That's the thing. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, wow. I missed this. It's like he's just like some dude who graduated from UCR or something. He's not like trained as a translator or anything. Uh huh. I, I don't remember all the details, but it's like, did the angels not look into this guy? He just showed up and was like, I can translate. And they're like, okay. <laughs> oh my gosh. I don't know. That's man. insane. And then, of course, of course, the 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 cherry on the top of all of this is in the filing there. They mentioned how he talks about he lost a lot of money in crypto. And you're like, of course he did. Right. Of course. That right. Just, yeah. Of course. No. It's all of a piece. Amazing. Just well, a. 
I think I think people maybe rightfully, but maybe a little too harshly were like, "There's no way that Shohei didn't know." I don't know if I even might have said something along the lines of like, "There's no way somebody wouldn't know," but you know, looking at it now, you're kind of thinking, "Well, he was a lot younger then. He was trusting one person." I mean. I guess we have to say we could see it happening. A lot of us in our 30s and um, and 40s, right, thinking about how tightly we're managing our money in this market and economy and everything else. I know where every dollar is going almost all the time. Mm -hmm. And it seems kind of unfathomable. But for somebody that rich with people they trust, they can just say, how's my money? And you say, it's fine. And they listen to them. And that's kind of crazy. Yeah. It, it's a it's a window into a kind of wealth that like we can't imagine right for sure when you're just like i you know you're just like is the money good and the answer is yes and you're just like okay i don't have to think about money anymore and that's just like i can't couldn't be me <laughs> i can't yeah. and you know i'm not like you know none of us are you know struggling out here i don't think but we're certainly cognizant of money because you can't not be <laughs> Right, like yeah. when your car insurance goes up thirty percent every single time they renew it, you got to be aware. Yeah, yeah, truly a a baffling situation in every direction. Actually, right? Because all, all of the above, I would have. I can't easily believe said, no, go ahead. the bank. The bank. Oh my god! How did they? not have a better system for like um i don't know man well, it, like it's like you know it, you know what it is call? It, it's a it, it's a case of almost like the dude's impersonating him on the phone right stuff like yeah. that like, yeah it, the it, it's a case where it's almost like you know you hear cases of like elder abuse right where like it children will like take advantage of their elderly grandparents and like take all their money, take all their possessions, you know, do all these, like, you know, drain all their accounts and stuff for themselves. Mm -hmm. And this is like a, a, you know, he's not elderly of course, but no, it's, it's not a, it's not unlike a form of that, right? The, he's dependent on him for these things and he just takes advantage of all that trust that's placed at him to screw the guy over. Right. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I, I, I'm sort of shocked that like baseball hasn't said anything or done anything about it um, to like protect the other players who could be in similar situations, right? But aren't high profile like he is and so won't hit the news. Yeah, I think that's one of those things that we said last time and it's still going. It's, a, it's crazy. Or, who's, or <laughs> maybe whose translators are just like slightly less dumb. <laughs> <laughs> or not like completely abusing them to like five hundred thousand dollars a month or whatever. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable the whole situation, man. Well, uh, Ibe Mizu Mizuhara Mizunahara, dang, something like that. Uh, isn't the only one who did something dumb this week? Oh, <laughs> oh, Andy. No, no. Uh -huh. Uh, so his name's Mike Ibarra, right? I think it's like, Mike Ibarra. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Pre ex president of Blizzard, I believe. Yeah. For a short while there, right? He's moved on to question mark, question mark, question mark. And he's still talking apparently for some reason. Question mark, question mark, question mark is I took a large payout from Microsoft to go away during layoffs. And, uh, he, he fell on hanging. the sword of the layoff. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to sit in Newport Beach for the rest of my life on this money and play video games and be introspective on the internet. And yet, some people have to talk instead of shutting up. What if when you were playing a game like Elden Ring or The Witcher or... I don't know anything you really just you think, man, I spent $70 on this. But the developers did such a good job that after the credits, I should have the option to leave a $20 tip. 
Um, I'm going to look for that skip button. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely not planning to do that. But also, like, couldn't you just, like, buy the game again? If you want well, to do that. Specifically, those games I mentioned, if I gave you $20 more, how much of it goes to the people in the credits? That would, that would be my first, my yeah, first the, question. The answer to that would be approximately zero i mean it might not be exactly zero in some of those cases <laughs> but yeah. in some of the, in, in many of them it is zero but in you know a non-zero percent of them maybe there's like kickbacks based on sales or whatever to some of those but like you know now years after the release of elden ring or whatever if you hit that button who does it go to like the publisher's just like nom 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 more money for me right yeah i i kind of actually respect the uh naivete of it where it's like he's been out of the business for a year or whatever you know just sort of sitting around playing games and now like you know what if things were more fair for the little guy <laughs> like okay buddy you could have made him more fair while you were there but um, right yeah did you implement any of those policies while you were there no huh weird <laughs> diablo 4 sure doesn't have a tip button at the end of it you know? Yeah. I and don't like, know. you know, I, I, I love the idea that you could actually give it to the creatives directly and completely bypass the publishers and in a way, know, all the other like platforms and stuff, right? But in a way, it could be managed as a good idea of one, uh, for especially things like on Steam. Okay. Well, I paid 40 bucks for Bellatro or whatever. Uh, maybe you know maybe i do feel like they could use some more money but at the same time that developer is going to be out there with dlc and i'll probably buy it or that developer will probably drop a new game and i'll buy it and uh, again we buy things sometimes full price right i mean like vampire survivors right that game was three dollars and then we bought like nine dollars of dlc that yeah maybe we played a third or less as much as the original game but who cares because that game is great right yeah, they deserve the extra money. So, I mean, the individuals probably get their money eventually that they're going to get from this tip system. So then we're talking about, okay, well, Diablo 4 was so good that I really want to tip the people that are in the that did the development, the thousands of people that did the development on that game. I'm going to give an extra $20. And okay, well, it's going to go straight to them. Okay, what's 20 divided by 1,000? Mm -hmm. I don't know, man. It just feels like, well, games sure are expensive, and I wish we could afford to make $70 games still without them being $90. Can you figure a way to help us, consumer? Yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's like, could, could you not spend $500 million in five years making the game? You could not do that. I mean, there's plenty of recent evidence that it doesn't take that much to put out a, a game that's going to be a hit. I mean, what did Baldur's cost? Not a hundred million, I don't think. Oh, yeah, quite a bit more. You're right. Um, right? I don't know. Oh, no. The game was super expensive. Like, they made it yeah. over, what, like five years or whatever in early access and all that stuff. Yeah. Easily the biggest game that company's ever made. They got, you know... Uh, I don't know. It couldn't have been over a hundred million. You think it was over a hundred million dollars oh. to make Baldur's Three? Yes, Andrew, are you a fool? They've been developing it for like five years. It's way over a hundred million. Hmm. Let me. Uh, I don't rare, know. Do the rare actual instance of research on this. Uh, I don't know. I podcast. I know Pillars of Eternity and all those others were in the high high millions. Uh -huh. but not in the hundreds of millions. And it just feels like Baldur's Gate probably made do a little better than some of the other games out there. You know, whereas a Diablo 4 budget was probably, like you were saying, 500, 600 million, right? The, uh, the estimate, the, the, the quote, budgeted amount quote unquote mm -hmm. for the game was a hundred million. I'm sure they, they went over. They went over and the the guesstimation from people on the internet, which God knows, is somewhere yeah. between a hundred and two hundred. Okay. Okay. 
but notably not four and five and six hundred like you know call of duty and and so on and so forth right right oh yeah you know you know and the other the other thing is that that game took like five years or something to come out right where they're putting out call of duty every year so i don't know i don't think the tip button's the answer certainly not no (laughs) Like even if it was distributed equitably to the people that deserve it and you know all that stuff like it, wouldn't it just cause more weird fights down the line about who gets put in the credits and who doesn't right yeah how far down the line does it go it, I don't know which already feels... is like a huge weird thing that they fight about all the time like in studios like people get left off the credits because they leave in the middle of a project or whatever or they like, get laid off right before yeah. the project comes out and then they go back and pull them out of the credits yep that's happened I mean, it's literally been been happening in these big layoffs recently. I don't know. It just feels like. And by the uh, way, all the credits include all the executives who didn't do anything. Like that's the other thing too. Is like, yeah, you know, the, every platform and every publisher it has all their names all in the credits too. Even though, you know, they didn't make the game. I don't. I don't necessarily have anything against Mike Barra, but he came from business, right? He was working Microsoft business, then he ran Blizzard. Then he left Microsoft. It's like, I don't know where the, if the business side of things is really in this big a shambles, right? And, and the industry was doing really well back in the day when the, when the companies weren't run by business people, right? Mm -hmm. We've got to start thinking outside the business, the business ideas and, and like when you leave and you're sitting on your couch for years playing games, and and we come up with uh, maybe maybe get people to pay more. That's not a good sign in the business side. I, I think the funny thing is that you, you hear you know the uh, shoot I don't know how to pronounce his name Swen Vinka the guy the head of Larian coming out and giving mm-hmm. talks about how like ah we think just like single player games are good you can make a lot of money on those it's fine. Like you don't need to be everything multiplayer. It doesn't need to be a service. You can just make a game. And like, if you make a good game, you'll do well. And it's totally reasonable. If you budget for this and, you know, plan, you can make it work. And then all the people on the other side of the industry being like, we're drowning. It's impossible. Single player games don't work. And you're like, <laughs> huh? Looking. You're also specifically talking at the scale of Alarian studios, right? I think there's a well, lot of, no, but, more- he's, but he, of course. And he's like clear about that. He's like, Hey, we got the biggest we ever were during the making of this game. It's probably a little too big, but you know, we planned for this, right? Like Mm -hmm. we intended to scale up and then we intended to scale down and we were clear about that, you know, going forward. And meanwhile, these other companies are like, ah, we're laying everybody off every two weeks. We don't know why. Ah, yeah. Well, I was going to say, I think it's it's a little bit tougher on the smaller, like, three or sure, four the, the person like, teams. The, you know, yeah, the, the real it. small studios, for sure. Or, you know, if you you're know, they're unproven, right? I think that's the other thing, is that, like, yeah. Larian has been provably making awesome hits for, or, you know, I don't know about hits, but what's your definition of a hit? But, like, yeah. prov- provably awesome games that have been well-liked and played by a lot of people for several years leading up to this one, right? Which then broke huge, right? Mm-hmm. If you're making your first game, well, <laughs> you're not going to get that benefit of the doubt, right? Well, that was the, yeah. um, that was the odd quote of the week. I think, you know, People, people stepping on landmines they don't need to step on and getting picked up by internet news services. I don't think he deserves the amount of making fun of that he's getting. People, I mean, People say dumb not, stuff on the internet all the time, right? It's like, yeah, this isn't any worse. It's, but It's not any worse than most of the dumb things people say. And, and honestly, it's nice that someone's thinking anything about how to get some people paid more. And if he's trying to think about it directly, then good. But like, God, we got to find better ideas than that. Yeah. I think that's the I think that's the correct takeaway there. 
Hey, I have some news. Uh, I don't know if either of you heard about this. You filed your taxes, and I have heard about taxes. <laughs> uh, yes, hey, uh, this podcast is coming out. It's probably it's a little tax too day late. Today. It's a little too realize, late, I think. I didn't realize when I went to the post office today that it was tax day. Oh, oh busy, big busy mistake. Day the post office. <laughs> big well, I file mistake. online. Why are people not filing online? It's literally free. Yeah, it is. It's true. Uh, no, it was not about taxes. Uh, I was going to say, did either of you hear that iOS finally lifted a restriction on emulators? No. Oh, I had not heard this. We haven't even talked about the iOS texting laws- lawsuits. Uh, we could talk about that later if you want. I'm going to yeah. constrain myself to talking about emulators. Uh, they re- lifted the restriction on emulators. You can now publish an emulator on the iOS store. Okay. With so like RetroArch? A, with a big caveat. I was waiting for that. Because <laughs> nothing is, no free lunch, right? Nope. And I believe the way it was worded is that all of the games that you play, you have to provably have like control of or licenses for. As the consumer? I, as the developer, it made it sound oh. like. Hmm. So nothing will ever get released. It's, unless there becomes some way to like sideload ROMs into an iOS device, which I don't think no, is a they thing. they don't have an SD card. Right. So like, I don't know how you could do it through some sort Although, of like USB override jailbreak situation. Yeah, I mean, they do have a, they do have a USB and you can attach drives now. Right, because they're switching over to USB-C, and you can attach an external drive to an iPhone, and you can extend. So you could, you could, you could find a way to sideload. So, but that would be the only way to get that stuff on. It could never be distributed through the App Store. Well, that makes sense. It, right, but then, it, I, then you are left with an emulator that can't play anything, and you have no way to access anything from it. Right. Well, I wonder if this is a move from them to prep the way for atari or other companies to put their own emulators into the store uh, previously that would have been against the, the guidelines and now it is not so you could be right obviously no news about any of that but that i've heard of but also you know is the atari 2600 official emulator gonna rock anybody's world like no, no but they, they want, could put they their own ROMs or whatever it. right but they could put their yeah own they ROMs would own the roms yeah you're that's true I don't so, know. Um, you know, but like, yeah, like, you know, would they allow them to put something like RetroArch on there or, you know, any of the other uh, open source emulators that are, you know, have reverse engineered all that stuff and are. Clean, I might have to get right? a backbone. Do you know what that What's, is? No, no, it's a backbone. Oh, uh, I think is it made by it looks exactly like a PS controller in its layout. Um I'll find it anyway. I think it's called a Backbone One. It's a USB C or iPhone based game controller, much, much more secure around the phone. Oh, um, okay. I see. I, I'm looking at a picture of this. Yeah, find a picture of one real quick. Okay, Backbone O N E. That's that's how you spell it. Um, right. it is imagine two Joy Cons with a weird bar connecting them across the middle that you can like resize to fit your phone in the middle and then they like, clamp onto the sides of it. This. I have seen this. Yeah. yeah. Um, I was actually thinking about, I, I really don't like the idea of using my, I, I you brought for a while. I think I told you guys a long time ago, like I was trying to like Bluetooth my controller to my phone so that I could play games on my phone. And I was just like, this is silly. You know, like the whole point of the phone is that you're not carrying a bunch of extra junk around. And I tried yeah. a long time ago those like stick on controllers where they like suction to the screen and then you use your thumb on them and they capacitate to the screen. And those are bad too. Just in general, I think like the phone level of gameplay that you really need is is much more simplified. But a backbone, a lot of people swear by them for this type of thing where you're going to play 
and it reduces the amount of kitschy amount of things that you have to carry, like a separate controller or whatever, because it's just in your bag. It's it folds down small, and then you smack it onto the back of your phone, and it's apparently very secure. It makes it look like it looks like it turns your phone into like a Steam Deck, effectively. Like it, yeah. the, in terms of the size of the thing. Yeah. I think PlayStation has even branded them. I can't remember. Well, PlayStation sells one called a portal, but it doesn't have anything to do with your phone. No, I think at one point PlayStation branded these things, but they're owned by somebody else now. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm anyway. Um I wouldn't go ahead and start like uh, rushing to go buy that, Andy. You should like actually see if anyone actually puts an emulator out first. I'm I'm not good. I mean, I literally have all the emulators on the deck, so yeah. I I mean, that's the other thing is that like, is are they just trying to catch up and get a a slice of that deck? Uh, let me let me put market, it this way: right? my phone, despite being large, is still too small in my mind for playing a lot of games. Yeah, yeah, I think that's true. Be- especially because you know older games, you're going to be really wishing it was four by three, and if you stretch it to fit a phone, it's going to look real dumb. I think the thing that we have to remember, though, emulators on the phone is really cool. I'm not even the target market for it. It's the people that can't afford the other devices. This is who that's for, right? Yeah, yeah, and that's good. I mean, Look, they I, can run I, on there. I think it's great. Like, I'm, sh- I was shocked that it happened, and I was like, I needed to get your guys' opinion on this because I, I would believe. imagine this is because some official company is coming out of the wings and was like, "Hey, your policy says we can't do this," and they were like, "What about money?" And Apple's like, "Oh, we do like money. You're right. We do <laughs> like money." Yeah, I, I would love for that to be true, right? Like, that would be the best yeah. case. Um, my worry is like. They were about to get sued in Europe or something, and so then they changed the law, but only to the like, you know, the monkey's paw <laughs> curling here saying, <laughs> ah, but now, like, right, we comply with the law, but you also can't make any productive use of this. Yeah, we'll see, I suppose. Um, well, the big news is that we're still playing a lot of Bellatro over here. <laughs> that is the big news. Yeah, I've beaten it Multi- uh, with. <clears throat> all the basic decks on white stake and most of the cool decks that you don't get from just beating it on harder and harder stakes. Some of those decks are pretty cool though. You're kind of missing out on some of them. They're pretty sweet. I'm working on it. I'm working on uh, it. I put, be- I've beaten red stake with the, the money deck. Okay. And so, I was close to beating green stake, but I messed up. Yeah. The, I, I feel like I topped out with that deck after green, like the stake above green, uh, purple. I don't, I don't remember. Um, Michael stakes, stakes change the rules on you. It's like so difficulty the first, basically. The first difficulty takes money away from winning in the first round of each ante. Okay. The second stake makes the ante amounts go up faster. So, like, you need to ramp faster. Sure. So you have less money and you need to buy more stuff somehow, you know? Yeah, no big Um, deal. No big deal, yeah. JJ? Yeah. One. I think jokers tend to come in groups. Like, if you see a joker that says something about pairs, you're going to see a lot of jokers about pairs. Uh, there are conspiracy theories out there, <laughs> uh, <laughs> not proven at all, but that are basically like there are seeds internally, pools, if you will, of certain kinds. And if you're in a certain pool, you'll see some and not other ones. I don't think anyone has ever actually proved that and the developer isn't saying anything. I mean, there's common, uncommon, rare. I get it. And there's legendary. I have now seen two legendary jokers. And of course, I've won both games with them. But uh, I have I have seen three and I lost one with the third one and the third one. Ooh. Let me tell you, trash. Maybe after I, I mean, I snap took it right. It was just like, oh yeah, hell yeah, we're doing this. And then after I looked at it and thought about it, I was like, this is terrible. And <laughs> yeah, I lost. 
but yeah, it, which are the ones that you have encountered? Um, oh God, I don't remember the names. <laughs> uh, Do you remember what they did? No. <laughs> okay. I played so much. Bel- I've got like 40 hours in Bellatro in two weeks. A reasonable amount. You don't have a problem. It's fine. Yeah. Um, I would, I wouldn't be surprised though, because there's a lot, there's 150 jokers in the game and there are some I see all the time. And usually the ones I don't see don't come up when I've already like kind of started to pick a path. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like there are games where I'm trying to play pair and the half joker never comes, never comes, but I see three and three of a kind jokers forever. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Um, I think it, to some degree it has to do that though. Otherwise maybe some of the higher difficulties would actually be impossible. Well, like if I it would, was just fully random and you've unlocked everything, the chance of actually making a build would just be impossible. Right. <laughs> I would, by the way, bootstraps is an amazing card. Oh yeah. Love bootstraps, man. You got to pull yourself uh, up by them. The whole thing. It actually yeah. works in this. Unlike real life. <laughs> <laughs> um, I wish, though, that I could participate in that. I wish I could control a subset of, like, a real roguelike game, right? Where I could kind of, like, yeah, it's going to be random, but I could kind of pick the deck or something where I could say, you want to be like, give me, give me a two pair build today. I want to see two pair or, stuff. Or give me, give me this subset of jokers, A, B, or C, so that I'm not hope, wondering about a pool of 150 cards, what I'm going to see. Yeah, it's going to get impossible later on. Um, Kanio, Kanio, um, when you destroy a face card, you get times one molt. Oh, I haven't, I haven't gotten that one yet, but that sounds cracked. It's, it's very good. It, you know, just make all your face cards glass. Or just get the card that destroys them. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, tarot. But I'm saying like, if you don't get the destroy card, you can also play the glass card. Yeah, then. make them glass. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, making stuff glass is like a low key great way to thin your deck too. Yeah, um, Chico is the other one. Disables this one is this one's nuts. I don't know how you don't just win every time you get it. Disables effect of every boss blind. I got this one. I I destroyed the entire run with that. It was just like, who cares what the boss is? In like a yeah. young. <laughs> You know, this game does it on purpose. I, I fully believe it feels out your build by a certain point, And then near the end, we'll put the hard counters in there. It's like, oh, your build is all based around money. Every time you play a card, you lose a dollar. And you're like, <laughs> I'm, I will go. Oh, yeah, Michael. <laughs> oh, and Michael, Michael, you can't normally go into debt. But if you're playing against that, that boss, it will sure put you into debt if it wants to. There's a joker that'll you let you go into debt, but yeah, yeah, normally you can't go below zero. That boss will totally let you though. Uh, it, it will ruin you, especially if your your build is all about money, or uh, you know if if you can score really high with like two cards, right? Yeah, if if you can do it with one hand or something, right, and like you can get through, it's okay. Only lose five dollars or whatever, but that's so ruinous. But <laughs> you come up with that guy, and it's just like it shows you the boss the possibility, and it's like boop gone <laughs> it, 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 there's some like great comedy moments in this game with like stuff disabling boss blinds where it's just like it shows you the boss ability and then like the text just like winks out <laughs> yeah uh, they really need to probably work on the rarity the, the rare jokers are just not not very good uh, there are some of them that are very good but then there are some of them that are yeah like bad actively uh so the the legendary one that i got that uh, is now apparently being reworked in the patch, which thank God, uh, I think it was Yorick. And it's basically like, it does nothing now, but after you do so many discards, it turns into like a three X or a four X malt or something. So like, that's a pretty good payoff. The problem is the number of discards you need to do. It's not cards discarded. It's times you hit the discard button. Yeah, and it was like twenty four, like some like high number in the twenties, right? And you're like, how many antis is that? You're like, I have to get this on like round one. 
to even have a chance of ever getting it before I clear anti eight. Yeah, I hit Chico on round one in a tarot pack. Oh, my God. I, I think you can only get the legendaries from the tarot packs, actually. I don't think I've ever seen them any the other spectral? way. Spectral? No. I've oh. never seen the legendary shard in the spectral pack. I've only ever seen it in tarot packs. Very weird. I don't know if I'm just unlucky or lucky that way. But yeah, I. Uh, man, what is there to say? Blotra is so good. Yeah, uh, some of the. I was telling you, I, I was telling you the other day, uh, which I'll try and explain this to Michael about the plasma deck, Andy. Oh, I haven't seen that yet. It, you get it for winning one of the stake levels. I don't remember which one. It might be black. Anyway, the plasma deck balances your chips and malt. Mm. So you're telling. Yeah. If, yeah. If one goes up, does the other go up? Is that no. what you mean, Greg? No. It, so it, uh, the way that JJ explained it to me, that I finally understood it. It was. It's confusing, have, and they don't explain how it works. I had to like if you empirically have learn. Michael twenty chips and ten molt. Right. You have thirty total. That's fifteen times fifteen. Okay. So it, it makes the two numbers equal. Right, so whatever the 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 chips and the molt work out to be, it calculates them normally, and then takes the two numbers and puts equal numbers on the sides of the multiplica- multiplier. Right. Okay, got it. So it's like, you know, if you have a hundred on one side and two hundred on the other side, you're going to get one fifty, one fifty, right, or whatever. And if you have ten on one side and ten million on the other side, it's going to figure that out. <laughs> Five million, whatever, right. Which leads to a bunch of very unintuitive ways of playing Bellatro because anything that increases the number is good. And the bigger the increase of the number, the better, actually. If you increase both sides, great. But like, if you just go all in on increasing one of the numbers by as much as possible, that might be better, right? If you can increase a number by 100 chips, that's like 50 mult, <laughs> right? That's crazy. Right. Um. So it leads you to do a bunch of like really unintuitive plays. Yeah, I've been trying takes, to get my head around it. It takes a hundred times one and which is a hundred and turns it into 50 times 50. Okay. That's pretty crazy. Yeah. And so it leads you to choosing a bunch of cards that are very different from what you would pick the or other way. Cards that might not synergize actually. Right. Yeah. It's like, Oh, you get a hundred chips. If you play it a pair well, like, who cares if I get 100 chips if I get 10 molt, right? It's like, I'm just going to multiply that 50 10 times. Or you might, you know, keep cards that you normally would get rid of, like the one that's um, 100 chips minus 5 every round. Right. Like, it's suddenly, like, actually really good for a pretty long time. Uh, and so I've been trying to win with that one. I've, I've Again, it's... Your strategies are kind of all out the window because you do eventually need those multiplier cards because eventually like the numbers don't scale up fast enough, right? Like you have to just get the numbers get too big without stuff multiplying. How does it handle how does it handle times molt cards? Everything is calculated normally first. So just, okay. just play normal Bellatro first, and then it balances the two sides after it's done the full calculation. So balance is Got always it. last balances that happen at the very end okay right but the problem is most of the like stuff in Bellatro that you're trying to go for is all about scaling the multiplier right like those getting m- more molt things that multiply your molt things that just like are going to increase the multiplier and you're not really as focused on the chip side yeah you want something to be juicing the chips a little bit right if you're just multiplying 10 10 million times it's not as good as multiplying 50 10 million times right but you just need a little bit on that end now you kind of want it on both sides and it's very weird and you do eventually need those big multipliers because otherwise you won't scale up fast enough just because there aren't as many like scaling chip things, right? There's that one joker where like every time you play a card, the number of chips it produces goes up. You guys seen that one? Uh, yeah, there's it's like uh, play anything of a suit with the castle. Yeah, that one's very good. That's a very uh, good card. There's the one where like it literally increases the value the card is worth. 
So you, you play a card, it's like play a two, and then it gives it plus two. So now that your two oh, is worth four next time. And the hiker. Uh, yeah, really you got to get that one. Er, got to get that one early. But yeah, it can be really strong. if you. I want. will mortgage my game if I see that card come up early. I will be like, I'm not supposed to spend money in this round because I really need interest or to save or whatever. But if that card comes up in the first three rounds, it's like an automatic buy no matter what the deck is. Yeah, it's really good, especially if you then play slow intentionally. It's like play bad hands on purpose to like keep building yeah. up the points. Yeah, if you don't need the money for sure. Yeah, that is also another thing that you then have to get good at, right? With some of those, like because you need to take advantage of weird scaling mechanics. It's like, oh, this one scales by 10 chips every time you do whatever. You have to intentionally do that, but not earn too many points that you just win. <laughs> and so you're just like playing bad hands on purpose in order to like increase your multiplier effectively. You have to get good at that with at all the high stake ones, I feel, where you really have to maximize like every discard, maximize every hand you're playing. Even when you know you're going to win with one, like you can win on the first play. Don't so that you can intentionally like build up more malt or chips or whatever the thing you're like trying to scale on. Set yourself up for the future. Yeah, because like you don't get any points for using those discards except for the money deck and you get a dollar for each one. Like even then a dollar sometimes is not worth it compared to getting like an extra two malt on your, you know, pants or whatever. Yeah, man. I feel like I could talk about Bellatro for forever. You guys are probably over it. Michael's probably over it. Michael's over it. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't even started. It's it's so weirdly the perfect Steam Deck game, and it's not even optimized for it yet. Yeah, it like the fact that it works with the touch screen, too, is just like, yes, of course, like I I do not use the touch screen. I honestly it is much faster to use the D pad, I think. But maybe, you know what? I'll experiment tonight and I will report back. I'm going to write the, it down. the controller touch. The controller controls are good and they work on PC like I've used them. But most of the time I'm just using the mouse because it's the mouse game. It feels like. But I bet the developer is like fu furiously working on a mobile port at this point, right? Because They'd be fools not to be. You got to think it worked out for vampire survivors. Yeah, right. Strike while the iron's hot. That's what I'm saying. All right. Uh, one more bit of pop culture stuff here before the end of the show, I think. Uh, did I mention on here? I, I, th I think I mentioned it to you guys. I don't know if I mentioned it on the pod that I've been rewatching the original X-Men animated series. Yes, you did. Okay, I did mention it on the pod before. You mentioned it. Which X Man? Merman, Merman. Uh, yeah. So I, I finally finished rewatching that whole thing. Uh, hey, did you know there's a fifth season of that show? I bet you don't, because you probably don't remember it. It was horrible. Holy smokes! <laughs> what animation style that? completely changes? I was, that's what I was gonna say. Didn't they have issues and like someone else had to animate it? Just like completely different look for the entire show for the entire season. Crazy. Like snap from the first couple episodes of that season to just am I watching like a Saturday morning cartoon that looks nothing like that series? It's just like some other looking thing. It's wild. Uh, and then it just ends. <laughs> they have an episode like the professor gets hurt. He gets like taken off to space by Lalandra, and then uh, there you go. Bye. Uh, that's the end of the show. Very strange. Uh, a lot of great episodes of that show, though, man. It, such a classic. I had big nostalgia for like several episodes, like remembering, um, you know, as as I was watching through. So I, I'm I will probably start watching X Men ninety seven here. Um, I watched the first episode, but I don't think an episode is enough to have an opinion about a tv show so not really much to it say about very it i mean it's getting a lot of chatter on the onlines it definitely is trying to do its own style it's not trying to be that style it, like even going back to the, if, it's thankfully not trying to be whatever they were doing <laughs> in the season five there it's not doing that uh, but it's also not doing what the old show was doing it, it's definitely doing something else but it's also not doing what a lot of modern shows do. So, you know, they went for something and that's, I think, good. At least they're trying, right? I think that's smart to, to acknowledge the nostalgia, but not have that be your only hook. 
Totally. And like they would have been fools to not do the song. They did the song. Oh, for sure. So like, you know, you're good. But yeah, I, I, I had never seen any of those final season episodes before. And I was just like, holy smokes, this is like <laughs> what happened here. I don't I know why I got canceled now. Jeez. <laughs> when you rewatched it, uh, did you think, oh, uh, my opinions of X, Y, Z have changed like characters or storylines or it, how there they handle cringe. Everything? I mean, like, you know, there's cringy stuff, right? Like there was a a later season episode episode arc where storm gets kidnapped and taken to some alternate dimension or whatever, where basically they're enslaving people and like, she's not happy about it when she learns about it, but like spends an entire episode, like, you know, trying to look the other way. And you're just like, this is a bad look. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, she comes down on the right side in the end, but you're just like, she's like, no, they, they want to be working. You know, working. They're definitely not not slaves. Oh, yeah. And and there's like, you know, bad portrayals of other races and stuff throughout the whole show. But, you know, I mean, the the 90s, I don't you know, I'm not trying to forgive it, but it's not, you know, it was a time and a place. Right. And at least to their credit, they didn't like, you know, memory hole those episodes like other Disney things have done. And they weren't like outrageously bad. They just weren't like, you know, up to modern standards, I would say. Like they wouldn't do that now. Right? They don't hold up as well. Yeah. But overall, I think a lot of the episodes were good. You know, it's very much a like random episode of the week kind of show. There's not a lot of through continuity. The stuff that does have through continuity is pretty good. But again, it's not not always there. And it really did feel like a rip from the comic books kind of thing. Right. Yeah, I really wonder was... if the new streaming rules and everything are is why we're getting so many animated shows. I think there's some new, new Star Wars animated and stuff like that, and and I know they like took offline Willow and a bunch of other more modern streaming things, but they're able to bring back all that X Men stuff. They're able to put out a new X Men show, more Star Wars shows, but they're all animated. I wonder. I wonder if it's a financial financial thing. Yeah, I mean, maybe the the numbers and the rules are just slightly less enough that it still makes sense. Or maybe they just do good numbers, right? Yeah, could be. Anyhow, I mean, like, you know, go rewatch that the first season of that show and, and the, you know, the stuff about the the Phoenix and all that stuff all holds up and is awesome. So if you want to get to that stuff, it's all great. Phoenix. Well done in that show, I think, but we'd have to get Ken's opinion. I th- I, I yeah, don't know. I mean, I'm definitely not a person who remembers the comic arcs or anything like that. I read some of them at the at the time, but or you know, which version of the the Phoenix from the comics? Yeah, I could not possibly. I mean, I can tell you what I can tell you what <laughs> happened in the Michael. show, but like, <laughs> Mike, Michael, I could hear his brain melting. It came out of his nose. <laughs> Well, there are just so many, right? Well, like like everything in the comics, but at this point. Yeah, it's like the, the, there's a lot of people from space in that show, you know. Cyclops' dad is from space. Uh, yeah, that's a. Uh, that second, was a weird one. I didn't remember that. Future, right? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. A surprising amount of stuff from the future. I definitely had remembered like Bishop and Cable and that stuff, but yeah. like. That keeps happening. <laughs> like they just yeah, keep, they keep, it doesn't it go keep, away. It keeps the future keeps happening, you know. <laughs> uh, and Cable and Bishop keep coming back. And like again, it was one of those things where I was like, "Oh, do they just like keep showing up?" I guess they do. I guess I thought it was just like one episode or something, but no, no, they're just like semi regular characters. I wonder if I can goad you into watching X Men Evolution. I mean, you could try. I guess I don't know. What's, why would I, why? Sell me on it. I mean, a lot of characters that were not standouts or in the the X-Men show, right? And uh, a much more 90s take, much more heavy 90s, early 2000s take on, on what the X-Men were. Uh, that, I'd have to think about that. It. Let me think about selling you on it. Is that a... A positive or a negative? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I can't tell right now. I got to think about it. 
Okay. Okay. Well, you know, I, I'm not, I'm open to being convinced. Um, this show was nice in that, like, because I had definitely recalled seeing some of the episodes before it was a great, like, you know, second screen, like, Oh yeah, I could watch this in between stuff or whatever. Right. While I'm playing Bellatro or whatever. Yeah. I did that with, uh, the most recent Rick and Morty season, Drive to Survive and Bad Batch. I've just been second screening while while I played Bellatro. Yeah, definitely uh, good comfort viewing, I would say. All right. Well, uh, I think that's all we got this week, unless I forgot something. Nope, I don't think so. Uh, Michael, I feel like the people need to know how to get at us. They can send us an email to podcast at weweregamers.com. Tell us your favorite episode of the original X-Men, the animated series, because there are some random ones in there. Oh, yeah. That is a good one. Because Man, dude. <laughs> like the one where Morph has a mental breakdown for like the entire episode. <laughs> Y'all remember that? Yeah, the or the one where doesn't Jubilee do like a Ren Fair fantasy storytelling episode? Oh, that's one of the horrible ones in season five. <laughs> so maybe I have seen that last season. Sounds yeah. like it. The, apparently, I I had to look at some of the like what the hell happened in season five stuff. <laughs> apparently, <laughs> that Ren Fair storytelling thing is a comic book thing that happened. It's not like. <laughs> They just made that up. So I was like, that's so random. Where did they come up with this? It's actually like a good story. But the animation is so strikingly bad compared to what they were doing previously that you're just like taken completely out of it. Mm. But yeah. Uh, very wild. Please, I want to hear folks' opinions about uh, the original animated series. Yeah. Don't tell us anything about X-Men 97. I don't know. We don't have any opinions on that yet. Well, well don't ruin it. You. Yeah. Uh, you can also get at us at socials, Instagram, Facebook, and you can find us on YouTube dot com slash at We Were Gamers. We've got some lovely curated content for your perusal. All right. Well, you know what? Here, uh, breaking news, Andy. Mm. Apple has already t- taken down a. Game Boy and uh, well, it was stolen. I read that article actually while we were reading that that uh, emulator was stolen from somebody else who was already in the queue. Ah, okay. See, man, everyone, why? But but I I really do think you can hook up a SSD to your iPhone because they have file management now in the iPhone. Um, so you'd be able to sideload. So okay, so you, you could get your stuff on and off there if you had yeah, to. Yeah, so, and I, uh, breaking, breaking news, RetroArch on their, not even their website, they, uh, like, if you click, if you type in Google RetroArch iOS, they have the sting before you even get to their website says it runs on iOS. So. Okay, that's sweet. Um, that's perfect. I don't that know how you want. can get it onto your iOS without jailbreaking it right now, but once the they get through the process you know a rare w for the consumer seriously right yeah yeah you have to i i have the ipa file right here so you'd have to jailbreak your iphone currently uh, hopefully it gets on there in a easier fashion I mean, for everyone else i mean if they already have an ipa file they just have to get it approved by apple so retro arch incoming rad <laughs>